Hi, welcome back to the channel. So today, uh, here in the UK, it's wet and windy, so I uh, can't go out and fly, so I thought I'd take the time to make a video about um, video latency. Video latency to me is defined by the time in milliseconds between it, something happening in front of your lens and it being displayed in front of your eyes. Video latency can be broken down into several stages. There's the time it takes for the camera to take the image and process it and send it out to the video transmitter. Um, and then there's the time it takes for the video transmitter to process it. Maybe it goes through the flight controller as well for OSD and to actually send it out over radio waves. And then there's also some time that the video receiver has to take to, to receive the image and to send it out analog uh, can be tested quite easily because it's all very open, uh, very open system so the entire video transmission system can be tested for latency so there's some really good tests on um, a channel called Drone Mesh, uh, link in, in the description um, he covers uh, the camera latency so that's the time it takes from the sensor picking up images uh, so what's happening in front of the lens um, and processing that analog signal and sending it, sending it out out the other end to, to your VTX. Um, that's the camera processing time. Analog signal is actually sent at double the frame rate that the screen is going to display at. So uh, there's two different video signals for analog as you probably know. There's PAL and NTSC. Uh, I won't go into loads of detail about the difference between PAL and NTSC. When we're talking about latency, the most important, the only important thing to really talk about is uh, the amount of frames that it sends. So uh, an NTSC signal sends 60 interlaced frames. Um, what that means is that for every frame, there's actually only half the amount of the image being sent. They split it over horizontal lines. Um, and half of those lines, the odd numbers get sent in one frame and all the even numbers, number of lines, they all get sent in the second frame. So although it's sending out 60 frames a second, uh, it needs two of those frames to construct one. So the resulting video feed is actually 30 frames a second. Um, PAL is only 50 interlaced frames and the resulting video is 25 frames a second. Just going on how long, how many milliseconds are in a second and dividing that by how many frames in a second are being uh, displayed in your goggles, you can determine the latency of ignoring the camera processing time when looking at an NTSC signal, um, you take uh, the 60 interlaced frames, divide it by a thousand. Uh, which is every 16.66 milliseconds it's sending uh, one interlaced frame. Now as I said it needs two of those frames to create a, a full image um, so you divide the thousand by 30 frames and that results in a 33.33 millisecond delay in between each frame now, as I said that's completely ignoring uh, the processing time of the camera which after looking on um, drone mesh, it seems like um, depending on the camera you use, if you're using a racing camera like a Runcam Racer 2, they're both running, they're processing images as around two milliseconds. If you're running more of a freestyle camera like a Foxia Toothless or a Runcam Phoenix, those, uh, I think the Toothless was around 20 milliseconds and the Runcan Phoenix was around 30 milliseconds. So you have to add that time on before the transmission latency, which is determined by the amount of frames per second that it's actually sending. So with an NTSC signal, you prob you're looking at it with the camera processing, let's go with a racer two of two milliseconds, you're looking at a 35 millisecond. Then the, that's not including the flight controller, the VTX, the video receiver and sending it to your goggles. So let's be really fair and just say that takes one millisecond, which I'm pretty sure it must take a bit longer than that. But I don't know, 
couldn't find any results on that or any information so we'll just say it takes one millisecond so you're looking at 36 milliseconds at, uh, at the very very best um, that's not including any frames that are missed or any frames that are completely covered in static that you can't even see and you're not really getting any information anyway so the latency of uh, the best the best possible latency that an analog system can produce is about 35 36 milliseconds um, if you're running if you want a better picture in your analog feed and you're running a phoenix or a toothless uh, your latency is is over 50 milliseconds when so now if we have a look at the PAL signal so if you're running PAL because you it does produce a nicer quality image uh, even though it is a lower frame rate the latency shoots up quite a bit just by missing those five frames um, you're looking at um, 50 interlaced frames being uh, over a, over a thousand milliseconds being 20 milliseconds per interlaced frame you need two of those interlaced frames to create one of your 25 frames a second which results in a 40 millisecond delay um, then adding on the uh, processing time of the camera if you're running something nice like a phoenix you're looking at over 60 milliseconds 70 milliseconds and this where this is where it comes down to what suits you really whatever suits whatever suits your flying style now if you're running PAL running in PAL and a Phoenix 2 that's like the one of the highest um, latencies you can run in an analog setup and you're finding it fine and you and you're enjoying flying don't you don't need to worry about latency in in DJI or anything really because that's you know that's quite high latency uh, if you're racing around in that and it's not and you don't think it's affecting you then that's fine it's only one part of the latency in the overall system is the video transmission so I mean system latency can be broken down into three big sections you've got the video latency as I've already spoke about the next section being the, late, the control link latency so the time it takes from you to move those sticks for it to process that movement, send it out to the uh, receiver um, that's your control link latency and then thirdly you've got your flight controller latency which is the time it takes from it receiving a signal processing that, going through the PIDs, the dry rope, blah 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 and actually outputting something to the mo motors to, to move the quad based on what you've controlled so if you've got a lot of latency in your system already and you're adding to it with your video it could be that could be causing you problems a lot of the time you could make your quad feel more locked in just by running a lower latency video system uh, and not even touching the pids so, or, or, or the filters or anything to reduce phase delay and or, or running a crossfire shot to reduce your control link uh, latency. When people are comparing DJI latency against uh, analog latency and saying I can't fly DJI because of its variable latency, it does get a bit annoying when you hear things like that. DJI is running 100, the camera at least, they say that in your, in your goggles as well you get it, is running 120 frames a second. And if we do the same maths uh, with dividing that 120 frames over a thousand milliseconds, it's an 8.33 millisecond delay between uh, images being sent, which is a lot, lot less than any analog system uh, can achieve. Now, it's HD. Uh, there is a lot more processing going on before it gets sent to your goggles, so that's where the latency comes in and depending on what settings you put in your goggles depends on how low you can get that latency now I've noticed recently that some very experienced um, pilots haven't actually even realized that there's a setting in the goggles when you set the, the output power uh, called temperature <coughs> temperature control temperature limit or something <clears throat> and they leave that enabled, they put it in low latency mode and they go out and fly and they're flying around and they think 
Yeah, I know it's quite good, but I think analog's a lot lower latency. Well, yeah, it is, because you've got that low power mode thing on, which is, comp you just need to turn that off and you'll be instantly down to pretty much 21, it's my, my DJI setup runs 21 to 31 milliseconds all the time. If it goes above that, it's because I've flown behind something. If we're racing in 25 milliwatt, it just doesn't ever go above 31 milliseconds. It, it, it just doesn't. Um, when you're only 100 meters away from you, doesn't. there's no problem with latency at all. Um, now, technically, that's that's going to be lower and more consistent than an analog setup because uh, it, there's none of this deinterlaced imaging going on. Or maybe there is. Maybe it's some fancy digital deinterlacing thing. The fact is that nobody really knows or can test the DJI system properly to actually figure out what what the proper latency is. All we can go by is that the, is by the number that DJI puts in the corner of the goggles called latency, which they define on their own website as the time it takes the, from the camera input to the goggles, which is what I'd call video latency as well. So does sound like that is the actual latency but this other setting bit unsure what it's for to be honest I think it's more if you're flying in a really hot environment um, so that you can you could turn that on and it will give you a much more consistent um, feed a consistent connection because uh, rather than keep thermal throttling and going high and low all the time it's just kind of like uh, I think it's around 57 milliseconds all the time but the yeah it's it's definitely you you want to turn that off when you're flying uh, I turn that off and I fly 1200 milliwatts all the time and it's yeah it's not a problem at all so yeah hopefully this video has been helpful to you and um, as I say I'm not an expert I'm not an expert in this at all this is just based on what I've managed to learn over over the years and and uh, with and what I've been able to <laughs> read up on basically I may have got a couple of things wrong I'm happy for you to correct me in the comments um, or if you've got anything constructive to add to this then yeah let, let's talk about it I'd love to I'd love to learn more about it I find it really interesting uh, how such a sh fraction of, of time can be uh, n perceived by the human eye like it's yeah it's incredible and it just yeah it's another cool side to the to the hobby that I enjoy anyway but hope you do too anyway right See you in the next one. Laters.